These are some of the other new uh, front runners that we literally just got these samples like the other day. Um, Do you all see it? Oh my gosh, look at this. You guys in the colors. Yeah. They say you can tell a lot about a person based on the shoes they wear. I love shoes, but what I love even more is the person wearing them. As we walk a mile, my guests and I will talk about the kicks we wear, but more importantly, what we do in them. My name is Jay Mallory McCree, and this is A Mile in These Shoes. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Jay Mallory McCree with AMNTS, A Mile in These Shoes. And I cannot tell y'all how geeked I am about today's guest. True pioneers in the shoe game who have designed some of your favorite kicks, but have decided that Indy is the way to go. Please welcome one of my favorite shoe brands, the pioneers themselves, Josh and Brandon Brewbreaker, founders of clear weather shoes what's up y'all how you doing good to good see you man what's up good to see you you guys ready to go for a walk let's do it. Yeah, let's do all right it. who's josh who's brandon i'm josh you're josh yeah brandon who's older i am this is the older brother <laughs> eight years eight years Yo, that's cool. I'm seven years older than my brother. Where is Santa Ana? Where am I right now? It's like the most city vibe in Orange County, but it's, it's a, we're in Orange County. I live in the city of Orange. My brother lives in Costa Mesa, so it was like a little in-between ground. Um, but, you know, it had a little bit more of like a street vibe than a, mm. than a beach vibe. Been around the area for seven years now. Seven years. So I gotta ask, who got the shoe bug first? Like, uh, what was it like growing up? Kind of grew up in Corona, and then one mm. of the main Vans stores was there, mm -hmm. where you could like custom order, you could go pick materials and do all that. Got into it kind of then, when I was younger, but then really like, I guess when the Jordan ones came out, it was like, oh, okay, like this. And back then it's like, my dad found like both colorways at like Big Five Sporting. Oh my gosh! You know, yeah. More popular. Right, right. So it was like you caught them for like way cheaper, and you know, so I was able to get like both pairs, both colors, and um, then it just kind of like started from there. But I wanted to be a comic book artist uh, when I was a kid. Um, I like drawing a lot, characters, mm -hmm. cartoons, whatever. Um, and then when my brother got a job uh, for bands. I was kind of like, you could, I didn't realize people actually drew shoes, like they designed them. Right. Didn't even put that together yet. So once that happened, it was like, yo, I'm gonna just start drawing shoes. So I was in seventh grade, I just started drawing shoes every day. And when I wasn't skating, I was drawing shoes. And what was that experience like working at Vans? Oh man, it was awesome. I mean, like for me, it was like, I had no idea what I was doing whatsoever at all, right? It was like a junior design position. And uh, when I got in there, there was only, they were coming right out of bankruptcy, right? Oh, so dang. they were trying to rebuild. And I was just young, you know? Mm -hmm. I was like young and I was into the culture and, you know, surfing, skateboarding, snowboarding, all that. So I just leaned on that heavily. Mm -hmm. like, what, you know, what are my peers like? What do, you know? Like I knew what people were into. And then I just kind of ran with that. Josh, I'll take it to you. What were some of your influences of style and just fashion in general? Uh, I mean, skateboarding. Yeah. Really skateboarding is what kind of got me into a certain type of music or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. was playing in that, um, in those videos uh, back then. But that would probably be the, the number one Thing as far as like what I followed and what I was into, right? And then it, you know, crossed over to whatever was going on in music and fashion at that time. Brandon was doing some freelance for uh, Supra when they were just starting out, before they started, and same type of deal. Uh, they were looking to hire someone. He recommended my name. I went in there and told him what I was into, and that was mm -hmm. like when I was really at my peak of being into fashion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. I mean. I just like to keep creating new stuff and mm -hmm. figure out what's next. And, you know, it's always cool when the person you 
are inspired by starts wearing your shit. That that's different than say just some random stranger. Right. Right. It's yeah. See your design on the in the real world, but like that gets like random get over that stranger. pretty quick. That's that's what I was gonna ask. The random stranger is like the early on. Like, yeah. You just don't even know what you're doing, and then yeah. you see somebody <laughs> at like the movies or yeah. something wearing your shoes, and you're like, yo, that that's it's cool. It's like a crazier like yeah. highlight like, yeah personally right where you're like i don't even know that person and they bought it, like, <laughs> and the they got them that i designed you know someone random wearing your shoes you know that's i i feel that would be a success um and i just want to know what does success mean to you guys i mean because you've worked with some of the biggest the best you know you're still doing it what does that mean to you I don't know, man. It's like such a hard question, right? Because it's like you look at it in like so many different ways, like success business wise, or mm -hmm. success like with my friendships and like my family and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Super successful with friendships and my family and all that. Like, right. I'm like feel like more than blessed, right? Um, footwear's been, I mean, I've been successful. Like we've both been successful in our footwear careers, mm -hmm. right? but it's like, it's like almost like uh, it's never enough, right? Mm. Like want to like keep on pushing and keep on, you know. You get to a point with kids where you're like, okay, I don't want any more kids. You know what I mean? <laughs> For <laughs> sure, like, yes. You know? But it's like with footwear, it's like you want to keep on like doing it and you want to keep on pushing and you know, like staying relevant to mm -hmm. like you know, not even the industry, but to your peers. I I, I feel like. Now it's like, especially with, you know, like Clearweather, it's like, you know, we're trying to flex on like our peers, you know, like, yeah. it's like what we do and this is what we're about. We don't have anybody to answer to, you know, it like makes it very much like making ourselves happy. So I guess success for me is like making sure that me and Josh are doing what we want to do mm. like with our company and pushing it forward, but not selling out. So we just did our walk and talk where we learned about the past and what got them here. But now let's dig into the present with these shoes. Now we're about to check out the actual store and let Brandon and Josh show us the magic. Y'all ready? Let's go. We are here in shoe heaven or shoe haven. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, but we're here again with Brandon and Josh Brewbreaker of Clearweather Shoes. And I'm sure the audience wants to know what does Clearweather mean? How did that become the name of this company? Yeah, we kind of found the, the logo or icon first. It's a, it's a Native American pictograph that means Clearweather. And then we're also from Southern California. So Clearweather. So it kind of made sense, you know? At the beginning, we got the question all the time, like, ah, oh, it kind of sounds weird for like a footwear brand. Like it'd be a better apparel, you know, mm -hmm. like name and we're like, We've never really put like much weight in stuff like that. Yeah. You're going to make it what it is, you know? How do you guys come up with the designs of these shoes? I mean, these are like seriously next level fashion forward. You know, there's they appeal to so many different types of people, you know, skateboarders or hikers. Um, I just like urban wear, you know, like I love all the designs of you all shoes. What's the process? I'm, I mean, it's t 20 years. Been doing it. <laughs> you just been doing it. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is knowing how to build it. Ah. Uh. So you, you can make a drawing look really cool, but if you don't know mm -hmm. what to pick or how to do pattern corrections or make sure the shoe has composition, it just becomes like you don't know what's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe, yeah. Or maybe you like it. You don't know why you like it. Just like we listen to all different types of music, we're into all different types of shoes as well. For sure. And it's like trying to like bring those all into like a unique mm -hmm. platform mm -hmm. of a shoe that nobody's like really seen before. Right. Like Josh was saying, it's like, you know, like the wampas and stuff, it's a boot. Right, yeah. It's just like how clean it is and like the higher outsole. I mean, it's just trying to do stuff a little different. And the colors. The see. I think yeah, you're right. Colors, with Josh like, smashes colors. I think what you're right though is like the, the producer, right? Like if you think of music or mm -hmm. the greatest producers, it's not like they created everything from scratch. They kind of dug in the crates to find the Absolutely. Right and then put the right beat with it and then made this thing that was very special and people felt it. 
very similar process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many different fantastic styles here. Can you guys just sort of walk us through like what we what we're looking at? Yeah. I mean, yeah, th this is a new one. This one's nobody's really seen this one yet. Um, this one's called the Pathfinder. Oof. Which has this new Vibram or Vibram, however you want to say it, uh, outsole. Um, with the more techier upper with these asymmetrical plays. We, we like to do a lot of asymmetrical stuff. Um, I see. And then, yeah, these are all like reflective underlays. Um, Our stuff is very different from like, say, what's out. It yeah, absolutely. Like, and that's always like, it, this is actually the only shoe that we've had in a long time that I was like, oh, hell yeah. Like, you know, where I wasn't uncomfortable, but maybe that's just where we're at now. Yeah. It's like at first, you know? What is more important, designing something artistically for yourself or designing something that, you know, is gonna appeal to a consumer? I mean, just like, you gotta make yourself happy before you can make anyone else happy. For sure, that's yeah. right. I, I definitely start that, that too. It starts with, because you got to be into it. Yeah. To be able to like, I mean, you're going through a whole process where you're building a product and then releasing it. Right. right. You have to have some type of thing where you're like, oh, okay, this is for the end, you know, consumer. Yeah. But to get through that development, yep. you got to be into it because it's really quick. Like that you, I mean, we do it all the time. If we're, you know, developing a shoe and we're like, uh, it's like already the second round sample and it's mm -hmm. just not coming together, we're like, okay, we're done with that. So if you guys had to pinpoint your target audience, who do you think that would be? I would think someone that's trying to stand out, someone that doesn't want what everyone else has, you know, which we touched on that earlier. When we were growing up, you always tried to stand out by having what other people didn't have. Right. And now it just seems like everybody wants what everyone else has, whatever the hot shit is. The age demo for us, like demographic is like, we blew that out of the water right when we started. Because yeah, it's okay. like most companies, it's like, okay, it's, you know, 14 to 24. Mm -hmm. We're like, yeah, we're older than 24. Or, so I'm building, we're building shoes. It's our company. Yeah. We gotta move that age demographic up. Right. We know a lot of cool people that, you know, are older than I them, mean, this shoe's know? a perfect example yeah. of that. Like, we're, like B said, we're both were into ACG stuff. So, like, there was a shoe in high school that I wore that, that, doesn't look exactly like this, but it, right. it, it was inspired off of yeah. us when we were younger. For sure. We're older now, so it's yeah. like nobody knew what this shoe was. Can you guys give us a walkthrough yeah. of your space? Yeah, for sure. Kind of do everything out of here. Uh huh. Our man Francisco like takes all the photos. He's been with us how many years now, Josh? Long time. Uh, it's but a local kid that he used to like wait on us at a like restaurant that we used to go to and Josh and him got to talk in mm -hmm. like intern shot photos and then intern with us and yeah. been working with us ever since. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we try to keep it, you know, we just like to do what mm -hmm. we like, you know? For so sure. Like, you know, Josh will be like, let's do a sweatsuit. We're like, okay, I think this is our third one, yeah. right? So, but we do it very like sporadically. Mm -hmm. like, our first one was however many years ago. It's kind of on purpose. It's, we want to be a footwear brand and not like an everything brand. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were very thoughtful of what products we put out. And right. We, you know, we always like to experiment, try stuff. For sure. Where is like what we want to be. Speaking of footwear, do you guys exclusively wear your own shoes? <laughs> Pretty damn close. Probably 90% uh, of the time. Okay, all right. 5% of the time. As you can see, I traded my boots in for the fur. But that's what you get when you have a dope company that is unique, that is independent, and that just loves what they're doing. It has been an absolute pleasure profiling Clearweather, Brandon, and Josh Brewbreaker. If y'all don't know, you know now, because you're watching AMNTS, A Mile in These Shoes. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one. Brandon, least favorite pair of shoes of all time. Oh, jeez. Uh, probably winos now. Josh, what shoes would you be buried in? Barefoot. Can either of you remember what shoes you wore to prom? I didn't go to prom. <laughs> uh, I, they were some van sneakers. Hey Josh, name a personal highlight in your life. Uh, having kids. Brandon, what is one of the biggest obstacles you've overcome? Stopping smoking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs>
What motivates you? Uh, my family. The urge to get better. Brandon, how do you use fashion to help motivate others? By designing dope shoes. Josh, who is one of your role models? Uh, my brother. What makes you different from other shoe designers? Uh, yeah, I would say like the combo of designing and developing. That's yeah. like something that mm -hmm. I cherish myself, that I'm glad that I know how to do, that some designers don't. What is it like to walk a mile in your shoes? An adventure and a blessing and I'm like stoked. Hey, what's up, y'all? I want to thank you so much for tuning in to AMNTS, A Mile in These Shoes. If you guys are digging the conversations that we're having and the shoes that we are profiling, do me a favor, hit that like button. Or if you really like what we're doing, do me another favor, hit that subscribe button and comment. We want to hear your feedback. We want to hear how you liking the show, how you digging it, who you might even want to come on the show and be a guest. Yo, we love you, and I got one more question for you. What's it like to walk a mile in your shoes?